Man, 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 back at it. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. All right, check it out. News has broken out that Leo Santa Cruz is deciding his WBC title down at the 122-pound division, the super, the super bantamweight division. He's going to vacate that WBC title and remain at 126 at the featherweight division, where he is the WBA uh, world champion. So the thing is this. All those years that Leo Santa Cruz ducked Rigo. I want to talk about that for a second. He ducked Rigo for a long time. That was the fight at 122 that we all wanted to see. We never got a chance to see that shit, right? There was no unification match between Rigo and Leo Santa Cruz at 122. Rigo bent over backwards to try to make that fight, correct? I mean, bent over backwards, man. Try to get to do any kind of deal that he could to get a deal with Leo Santa Cruz. But no, Al Heyman's had bigger plans. He built Leo Santa Cruz up on Mayweather undercards after Mayweather undercards. Bum after bum after bum. The WBC allowed this You know what I'm saying? We never seen Leo Santa Cruz really officially challenged like that. You know what I'm saying? All that time he was really at 122. And it was just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? He was fighting dudes with seven losses, five losses. He, you know, this is dude, he was the world, he was the world champion. The man has been world champion since what? He had the, he was world champion since like 2012 and shit. And we never all that time got a Rigo fight. Never. The fans started to notice that shit. So we started to criticizing the shit out of Leo Santa Cruz punk ass. But then... He goes up to 126. After one fight, he finally gets him a title shot against Ab Abner Mardis. Well, not even a title shot. They fought for a vacant title. They fought for that WBA vacant title. And now today, he stands as the WBA 126-pound uh, champion. So we know that he has a pretty good relationship, if you will, with the WBC. He took the time to come out and announce the fact that I'm vacating my WBC title. I really th thank the WBC for all them years. He should have said, I thank you motherfuckers for allowing me to fight a bunch of bums and keep my title. Oh, yeah. He should have thought he should have thanked them for that shit. But he didn't. Fact of the matter is, he has a good thing with the WBC. So you would think at 126, where he's a WBA title holder, he would love to go after that WBC title, correct? Correct. Now, you look at who holds that WBC title. Gary Russell Jr. My motherfucking dude. Washington, D.C. zone, Gary Russell Jr. The question has to be asked, ladies and gentlemen. Will Leo Santa Cruz pursue that WBC title and go through Gary Russell Jr.? Will he do it? I mean, we understand. I understand Gary Russell Jr. has an upcoming fight on November 14th against Oscar Escandon. Now, though I don't know that much about Oscar Escandon, I'm expecting Gary Russell Jr. to get through Oscar Escandon. And the question has already been posed to Gary Russell. Fight Hype had an article about four days out, uh, uh, four days ago about this shit, in which they asked Gary Russell, would you fight Leo? And he said, and I quote, if I get past Escandon, I would love to fight Leo Santa Cruz. I would love to fight Leo Santa Cruz. I would love to fight Leo sucker ass Santa Cruz. He would love to take that fight. And that ain't, ain't, ain't even how Gary Russell talks. We know Gary Russell to be a humble dude. You know what I mean? He don't call out fighters much. He's very humble. He's very content for what he's done in boxing. At one time, I was almost questioning his passion, especially after the Lomachenko fight. That ain't even like Gary Russell. He don't call out people. But for him to say, I would love to fight Leo Santa Cruz. That means that the kid will definitely fight Leo Santa Cruz. He ain't ducking Leo Santa Cruz, ladies and gentlemen. The question will be, would Leo Santa Cruz duck Gary Russell? Now, there's some other good names. Now that he's officially decided he's going to be at 126, believe it or not, we gave him shit about ducking one dude down at 122. I ain't even going to get in a quig in Frampton. But he ducked Rigo for all them years, I mean, all that time, all them years for that matter, down at 122. There's a lot of sharks in the waters of 126, ladies and gentlemen. And the biggest shark and the biggest fish 
is Gary Russell Jr. Now, some may say it's like Lomachenko. Unfortunately, that fight is not available right now to Leo Santa Cruz, given that Lomachenko fights for HBO. When he fought Gary Russell, this was before he had his exclusive HBO deal. Now that he's the WBO champion, and we know that WBO title stays on HBO, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you know, it, it, he, he fights for HBO. Gary Russell Jr. is a Showtime PBC fighter, if you will. So is Leo Santa Cruz. They're both Heyman fighters. There is no obstacle stopping that fight from happening. Gary Russell said he would love to have the fight. Leo Santa Cruz, let's see your ass duck that. Let's see your ass duck that. And YTBC boxing fans, you motherfuckers better call him out on that shit. The same heat we brought on him for ducking Rigo. We better bring that same heat if he ducks Gary Russell Jr. Because I don't think Gary Russell Jr. would duck him. And there ain't no fucking obstacle and no reason why this fight ain't going to go down. I even take the Nicholas Walters fight if you want to take that. Maybe as a tune-up, given that Gurry has an upcoming fight. If you want to take Nicholas Walters as a tune-up, I'm cool with that. Nicholas Walters is, what, second by the WBA. Let it go down. But the fact still remains, he better not duck my man, Gary Russell Jr. Now, though I kind of almost opposed when he fought Abnomadez and, and they fought for that vacant WBA title, I was like, ah, because at the time, Leo Santa Cruz only had one fight at 126. And then he gets a title shot. A lot of people had put in a lot of work for that. And he just walks straight up to that 126 division. And he gets a title shot. I mean, I did. I did think, I didn't think he was deserving of such so far when a lot of other fighters put in that work. But the fact is, it happened. He beat Abner Martins for that vacant title. And it happened. Now, like I said earlier in the video, given that... The, relationship that he has with the WBC who allowed him to take bum after bum after bum down at 122 and allowed him not to go for a unification match with Rigo. I would think that he would like to get that WBC title at 126. So he better go after it. He better go after it. Now, though, like I said before, I didn't vouch for him coming out of the WBA and, and getting that title shot so early. It, is, it happened. Now, in this particular case, I understand there's a lot. He's not even ranked by the WBC at featherweight right now. But the fact still remains, it will be a unification match. He's a world title holder now. So if he wants to go after a unification match with Gary Russell, which I would love to see, we all would love to see, I think it's cool. It's cool. And the winner of that fight will come out to be one strong fighter at 126. But let's see if Leo Santa Cruz is going to play Duck Duck Goose at 126, though. He has Walters there. He has Gary Russell there. Like I said before, let's see if he plays Duck Duck Goose, man. There's also other fighters, though, at 126. We're not even going to get into that right now. Right now, my sights is on Gary Russell Jr. Now, if he wants to take one tune up, you know, he wants to go take some lower-tier lower, lower tier guy at 126 for his next fight, let him do it. If it's something that's going to, I guess, keep him busy, while, you know, we get the, uh, while, while Gary Russell disposes of Oscar Scandon, keep him busy of, of whatnot, then fine. Fine by me. But the next fight after that, we better be hearing about Gary Russell versus Leo Santa Cruz. If not, if he wants to sit it out and just see what happens with Gary Russell, fine by me also. But I just know within one or two fights, we need to be getting a unification match between Gary Russell Jr. and Leo Santa Cruz. No if, ands, or motherfucking buts. And I'm going to tell you like this. If he doesn't do it, all that many years that Al Heyman tried to build up Leo Santa Cruz from all that marketability to the Mexican crowds, uh, you know what I mean, letting them fight on, on Cinco de Mayo or whatever, letting them fight on Cinco de Mayweather undercards, all that marketing and building up he was doing will be for shit. Because if he ducks Gary Russell, or if he ducks Nicholas Walters, all people are going to be reminded of is how he ducked Regan Dow. And I'm pretty sure Al Heyman would like that shit to be gone off the fans' minds as soon as possible. As soon as possible. So, let's hope we get that fight. Gary Russell's evidently, he's down. He's already stated so. I'm picking Leo Santa Cruz. He'll, hopefully he'll be down. I haven't heard much from him about this yet. But I'll be looking for some information about that. And uh, I hope this fight go down. If not, 
If the dude played Duck Duck Goose at 126, I'm telling y'all, hold his ass accountable. Put his fucking feet to the fucking fire. Because that sucker shit he did at 122 can't happen at 126. To the next video, Main Man, Made Man. Don't forget to subscribe. Twitter, Made Man 511. Facebook, Main Man, Made Man. Boxing Forum. Damn. And it'll be something to see my dude, Gary Russell Jr., finally in a unification match. I'm telling you. The winner of this fight. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's going to be interesting to see how this shit go, man. It's going to be great. To the next video. Peace out.